The Face on the Barroom Floor by H. A. Darcy, read for LibriVox.org by Glenn Hallstrom, a.k.a. Smokestack Jones, smokestackjones at gmail.com. You'll find my website at toomuchjohnson.blogspot.com. "'Twas a balmy summer evening, and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled Joe's barroom at the corner of the square, and as songs and witty stories came through the open door, a vagabond crept slowly in and poised upon the floor. "'Where did it come from?' someone said. "'The wind has blown it in.' "'What does it want?' another cried. "'Some whiskey, rum, or gin?' "'Ere, tall be sick him, if your stomach's equal to the work. "'I wouldn't touch him with a fork. He's filthy as a Turk.' This bandage the poor wretch took with stoic social grace. In fact, he smiles, as though he thought he struck the proper place. Come, boys, I know there's kindly hearts among so good a crowd. To be in such good company would make a deacon proud. Give me a drink. That's what I want. I'm out of funds, you know. When I had cash to treat the gang, his hand was never slow. What? You laugh as though you thought this pocket never held a sou. I once was fixed as well, me boys, as any one of you. Here, thanks, that's braced me up nicely. God bless you, one and all. Next time I pass this good saloon, I'll make another call. Give you a song? No, can't do that. Me singing days are past. Me voice is cracked. Me throat's worn out. Me lungs are going fast. Say, give me another whiskey, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you a funny story, and a fact I'll promise, too, that I ever was a decent man, not one of you would think. But I was some four or five years back, say... Give me another drink. Fill her up, Joe. I want to put some life into me frame. Such little drinks to a bum like me are miserably tame. Five fingers here. That's the scheme. And cark and whiskey, too. Well, here's luck, boys. And landlord, my best regards to you. You've treated me pretty kindly, and I'd like to tell you how I came to be the dirty sot you see before you now. As I told you once, I was a man with muscle frame and health, and but a blunder ought to have been made considerable wealth. I was a painter, not one that daubed in bricks and wood, but an artist, for my age, was rated pretty good. I worked hard at me canvas, and was bidding fair to rise, for gradually I saw the star of fame before me eyes. I made a picture, perhaps you've seen, tis called The Chase of Fame. It brought me fifteen thousand pounds and added to me name. And then I met a woman, now here comes the funny part, with eyes that petrified me brain and sunk into me heart. Why don't you laugh? Tis funny that the vagabond you see could ever love a woman, and expect her to love me, but twas so, and for a month or two her smiles were freely given, and then her loving lips touched mine, and it carried me to heaven. Boys, did you ever see a woman for whom your soul you'd give, with a form like the Milo Venus, too beautiful to live, with eyes that would beat the Kuanar, and a wealth of chestnut hair? If so, was she or there never was another half so fair. I was working on a portrait one afternoon in May of a fair-haired boy, a friend of mine, who lived across the way, and Madeline admired her, much to my surprise, said that she'd like to know the man who had such dreamy eyes. It didn't take long to know him, and before the month had flown, me friend had stole me, darling, and I was left alone. And ere a year of misery had passed about me head, the jewel I had treasured so had tarnished and was dead. That's why I took the drink, boys. Why, I never saw you smile. I thought you'd be amused and laughing all the while. Why, what's the matter, friend? There's a tear drop in your eye. Come, laugh like me. Tis only babies and women that should cry. Say, boys, if you give me just another whiskey, I'll be glad, and I'll draw right here a picture of the face that drove me mad. Give me that piece of chalk with which you mark the baseball scar. You shall see the lovely Madeline upon the barroom floor. Another drink, and with chalk in hand, the vagabond began to sketch a face that might buy the soul of any man. Then, as he placed another lock upon the shapely head, with a fearful shriek, he leaped and fell across the picture, dead. End of The Face on the Barroom Floor by H. A. Darcy